Hey guys, welcome back to Fix It Friday. So I'm back from all of my various travels and I'm getting back into repairing and modding consoles. And so this week, of course, I decided to start with something really difficult. <laughs> so today what we're gonna be doing is repairing this PC Engine Duo. These are also known as Turbo Duos in the United States. And these things are notorious uh, for failing and they're really hard to fix. And the reason why they fail is kind of simple. So they all have these surface mount electrolytic capacitors that go bad. Um, this is a Japanese console and the caps on these tend to be a little bit better than the ones on the American versions. But either way, they fail, they leak, and they usually cause some kind of damage on the board. So, you know, sometimes you're lucky, you just replace the caps and that's all it takes and it's back to working order. Other times there are damaged uh, traces or severed traces. Uh, sometimes some chips fail, like there are these audio amplifier chips that are known to fail. Um, and then on top of all of that, you might have to align, realign the laser or replace the laser because it's failed as well. So bottom line is it's kind of a Pandora's box. You open it and you have absolutely no idea what you're getting into. It could be really bad. Um, and so, yeah, that's what we're going to start with today. So let's go ahead and take this thing apart and see what we have in store. But before we get started, let me take a moment to thank PCBWay.com for sponsoring this week's project. PCBWay is one of my favorite companies to work with because their PCBs are always very high quality and they have very fast turnaround times. But what's even better is that now you can get those PCBs fully assembled and shipped to your door. Right now, PCBWay is running an assembly service promotion, so only $30 for 1 to 20 pieces. PCBWay can source and populate your PCBs with all the necessary components, meaning that your projects can be completed even faster. So if you want the right PCBs for your project, then PCBWay has got you covered. Thanks again for your support, and now let's get back to the PC Engine Duo. Okay, so taking these apart is really not that difficult. There are five security screws on the underside, and uh, they're a little different depending on the region. In the United States, there are these game bit screws in Japan. There are these uh, security bit screws, and either way, it's not a big deal. You can get drill bits to take those off. Once that's all done, the top just comes right off, like so. And here we go. And so I can tell this one is completely original. Uh, nothing's ever been done to it, as far as I can tell at least. It looks pretty good. Um, and yeah, there's only a few more screws left that we need to uh, take out. They're, they're just located all around the board. So I'm going to go ahead and do that, and then let's take a closer look at this motherboard. Okay, so now we've got the board completely removed, and so I just wanted to call you guys' attention to some areas where you'll tend to find really bad caps. So I've found in the past that the ones over here tend to always be in really bad shape. Um, a lot of times the ones here in the power regulation section of the board tend to be pretty bad, and that makes sense. I mean, there's a lot of heat that gets generated here from these linear voltage regulators. Um, and then what also creates problems is the fact that there's a couple of little ICs here, like this one right here, and also on the underside right over here, there's just some components here. And so these caps, they leak, and then they also cause damage, sometimes destroying these chips, and then it leaks to the underside and causes damage to the traces underneath. So that's something you should be mindful of. Um, so, so yeah. If you're doing this yourself, I would definitely say this is for experienced people only, and it's something where you should really take your time and uh, go through the board slowly and carefully as you remove the caps and replace them with new ones. So let's go ahead and I'll just show you an example of how I remove the caps. Um, and then from there, we'll just kind of proceed and start replacing all of them on the board. Okay, so I'm gonna just demonstrate uh, replacing a surface mount cap by just picking this one right here. You can actually see on the surface that there is some electrolyte that's already leaked, so this one's definitely failing. Um, so there's two ways you can remove these. One way is to use heat, um, and you can either do that with a hot air gun or there are uh, these special soldering irons where you heat both pads simultaneously. Um, I do use that sometimes, but I find that, you know, it's definitely a slower method and you do have, can have some issues with like, say, if you're using hot air, you can blow off some of these smaller surface mount components if you're not careful. Um, and you also end up heating up a lot of extra components. Um, so you have to use a lot of like Kapton tape to insulate everything. So it's kind of laborious. Whereas if you use a mechanical method, uh, I would say that 90% of the time that works perfectly fine. And you should only avoid using a mechanical method if you've got 
a capacitor where there's significant damage to the pads, or maybe the pads are basically almost ripped off. That's not the case with this board. Um, thankfully, this board looks like it's in really good shape. So I'm gonna go ahead and use the mechanical method. So what I'm gonna do is I have a pair of pliers right here, and so I'm gonna grab the cap, and I'm just gonna rotate to the side. I'm not going up and down, only to the side. You can go just back and forth, and you'll end up just breaking the legs of the capacitor. There we go. So the legs are broken. Just take the bottom cap there. And actually, you can see them. They're still attached to the board, and the pads are there as well. You can also see a lot of electrolyte right there. So the next thing I'll do is try to clean up the area because you can't leave this stuff behind. It's corrosive to the board. So I'll go ahead and add fresh solder. You'll get that horrible fishy smell as well, which you know you guys can't thankfully smell this because you're you're watching on YouTube but be prepared for that it's not pleasant all right now I'm just going to use my desoldering gun to clean it off you can also use solder braid but you just want to get rid of all of this gross uh, you know solder that's on the board okay and so now we're left with two pretty clean looking pads. So let's go ahead and just add a little bit of alcohol to the area. And you definitely want to do this to every single cap that you replace. You want to clean the whole surrounding area with alcohol because the stuff left behind can continue to eat away at the traces. So you really don't want any of that left over. You want it completely gone. Okay, that's looking pretty good. All right, so that's all set. So now let's go ahead and put a new capacitor there. Okay, so you can see the alcohol has dried off now, and this whole region looks totally clean. It looks like nothing ever happened in the first place. Uh, one thing I will suggest, though, is especially when you're working in some of the other regions where um, the damage can be extensive, don't just clean the area, but also take a look at these little vias and these, these traces themselves. Uh, sometimes the uh, electrolyte can eat away at these, and it can also go onto the bottom of the board and cause damage there too. So, you know, before you put a cap on, you know, once this cap is, is here, you can't see what's underneath anymore. So before you put it on, just make sure that the area underneath has been really well inspected and that everything's looking good. This particular one is simple. There's really nothing going on here. So I'm going to go ahead and proceed. So to solder a surface mount cap, you start by just adding a little bit of flux. I'm sorry, a little bit of, uh, Solder, sorry, I got ahead of myself. I was gonna add a little flux as well, <laughs> just like that. And we're gonna go ahead and heat this up and just slide the cap into it, just like so. I might need to align it a little bit just so that it's good on the other side. There we go. And now we're just gonna come around onto the other side and solder that into place. I ended up adding more than I needed, but it's fine. Um, because yeah, this cap is totally flat and in place and looking good. All right, so that's the process that I'm gonna take. And so from here, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna go through all of these surface mount caps and replace every single one of them. So this is kind of time consuming. And what I like to do as well is I'll start with a value and just replace that single value all over the entire board. So for example, there's a whole bunch of these 22 microfarad capacitors. I'll just do all of those in one shot and then move on to a new value. All right, so let's go ahead and get started.
All right, so all of the surface mount capacitors have been replaced, and thankfully this board was in really good shape. I didn't have any pads that were damaged or lifted, and I didn't find any, you know, significant corrosion or anything that looked bad. Um, so I was lucky here, and I think maybe that means that this console wasn't used a lot, or maybe it was really stored in excellent conditions so that the caps deteriorated at a slower rate than normal. But either way, I'm grateful and it was a smooth process. So we're getting closer to being done. The only thing we have left to do now is to remove all of these larger through hole uh, capacitors. And um, yeah, I'll show you guys how to do that and uh, let's go from there. Okay, so we're at the underside of the board and there is an electrolytic capacitor here. There's also one right here. So as you guys can see, when these were installed at the factory, they take the leads and they kind of bend them into the via and then they solder in place. And this is actually good. It means that there's a really nice stable connection, but when it comes time to desolder them, this can actually create problems. So, you know, if you, for example, just add some fresh solder to these vias and then just try to pull the cap out, you might actually damage or destroy the via that way. So you have two options here. You can either take a desoldering gun and kind of heat and bend these leads and just try to get them straight, or you can actually come in with a flush cutter and just kind of try to clip them so that everything is pretty flush like that. And now I'm going to go ahead and just heat this up with some fresh solder. And now you can kind of rock the cap underneath with your hand while you heat each one. And there we go. You can see the cap just fell out and rolled away. Um, so yeah, these vias now are safe. There was no issue and here's the cap. No big deal with removing that. So I'm gonna go ahead and take out all these caps, clear out the vias with the um, desoldering gun and then install some fresh ones. Okay, so I have the PC Engine Duo all assembled and ready for a quick test. I'm going to test the CD side first because I expect that that's going to give me problems. Uh, normally, the Hue card side just works. You just plug it in, put a game in, and off you go. Everything's fine. But uh, a lot of times, you'll do a recap. Everything is fine with the board, but then you actually have to adjust five different potentiometers on here in order to dial things in with the laser. I'm really hoping it doesn't come to that. I mean, honestly, I might make a separate video if it turns out that I need to do that with this particular unit, but you know, this takes so much time. And so I'm really hoping that it's just the caps and I don't have to do anything else. All right, so to test the laser, um, what we're gonna do is we're gonna take the lid of the PC Engine Duo and there's this like magnet over here and then this lock, ring lock here that holds it into place. So if you take your thumb and just kind of push in on the ring and rotate it counterclockwise, it comes right off just like that. 
And then here's the magnet. So we're gonna use this magnet in order to test uh, the laser without having to actually reassemble everything. So you just take it and you place it like this so that it sticks to the bottom there. And then I'm gonna hold this switch down. This tricks the PC engine into thinking that the lid is closed. All right, so let's see. Okay, nice. All right, so this is not surprising. It's booting up. Let's hit the run button and see if it spins. Okay. It's spinning and it's also very quiet and quiet is good. It means that the error correction part of the adjustments are probably fine. It does take a while to load. That's actually not surprising. Oh, right. <laughs> oh, thank God it's working. Okay, great. All right, so it looks like it's loading this game up just fine. Um, so I'm not actually done with it yet. I'm gonna let it run and play it for a little bit to confirm that it's fine. But then I also do a secondary test. I take a music CD, which has tracks all the way on the outer rings. And then I try to play those tracks on the PC Engine Duo. And that's like a real test. If it can play those tracks, then the laser is properly aligned. If not, then I actually do need to adjust these potentiometers. So if that turns out to be the case, I'll film it and I'll show you guys. But if not, then this is the end of the video. All right, so that's it this week. And uh, I hope you guys enjoyed this repair of the PC Engine Duo. If you like this kind of content, then consider subscribing. I have videos out every Friday and I'm about to reopen my website. So if you guys have anything that you need repaired or modified, you can reach me directly at oneuprestorations.com. Thanks again for watching, guys, and I'll see you next week. Bye.